Hi, this is Rob and Mike from the McClellan Financial Group, and this is Think Smart with TMFG. I thought today we should talk about uh, the Canada Pension Plan. Um, I've had a lot of clients come in recently, and they're wondering, you know, when should I be starting my Canada Pension Plan? Uh, the rules are you can start it as early as age 60, or you could delay it until age 70. You know, what are your thoughts on it? Should, should clients take this thing at age 60 or should they push it out until they're 70 years of age? It's a very good question and it's funny because a lot of times I have clients come into me and they say, my friend says I should take my CPP. They saw their advice, I should take my CPP at this age. And they said, I want to do the same thing. Problem is they know nothing about their friend's situation. They don't know their tax bracket. They don't know what type of pension plan they have. They don't know if their income's splitting. They really have very little to work on. Uh, the rules are such. Uh, Canada Pension Plan is set to pay out at age 65. They let you take it early at a reduced, reduced amount. The reduction is 0.6% per each month before 65 you take it. You can take it the earliest at age 60. It'll give you a 7.2% reduction. If you decide to lay the pension uh, till after 65, they'll increase the pension by the same amount for each month. So from there, uh, there's a lot of things to consider. Uh, number one is uh, if you're working, if you still have income, sometimes when you get the money from the Canada Pension Plan, it's up at a 50% tax bracket, which doesn't make sense to take a reduction when you're at a very, very high tax bracket. Uh, the second thing to consider is lifestyle. I think the most important thing, to be honest, to consider is lifestyle. Uh, when is money important to you? So it's interesting, you know, that there was a, uh, a story a while ago about, you know, the three phases of retirement. And uh, the first stage is the go-go stage. And that's when you're, uh, you've recently retired, you're traveling around the world, you're doing things you want to do. Uh, you've got the energy, you've got the time, and you've, you've got the health. Uh, and then you move into what they call the slow go stage, uh, which is probably, you know, somewhere in your 70s. Everyone's different. Everyone's got, uh, you know, different genetics. But you start slowing down. Your trips may be more uh, local. You're not going as far. You're not taking the, the long uh, plane rides that you might have earlier. And then finally, you get into the, the no go stage. And that starts somewhere typically in your 80s. And you're still out and about, but you're probably not traveling much. Yeah. And so I think you need to take those things into consideration when you're deciding, you know, when do you, when do you need this money? So yeah. when do you need it? Absolutely. When you look at the numbers, the break evens, uh, it, the break even is a simple calculation. You can just calculate uh, how much you get early and calculate how long you would have to live to make up for that amount, getting a higher amount at age 65. And the break-evens usually come out around 74 years of age. So if you live past 74, you're better off taking it later. If you live less than 74, you're better off taking it earlier. The problem with that is it's a very simple calculation that doesn't include a lot of things. The one thing is they're assuming that the money you get at age 60 never gets invested, just gets spent. They put no, it just disappears into nowhere. So they're giving no value to that money they have from age 60 to 65. You always have to put a value on that cash you have for that time. If say you did the same plan, you just decide to take the money at 60 and just invest it at 5%, by the time you're 65, you'd have about $52,000 invested. So I'm, uh, let me understand, I'm in my go-go stage and I've got $50,000 that I wasn't expecting. Hmm, sounds uh, like a good time to buy a new car. A good a car, vacation, a lot of stuff you can enjoy from that age 60 to 65. Again, if you have retired and you stop working, this is the time when you should be enjoying life and spend money. So money early is always a good thing. So even, I was just even thinking, you know, if you had a, a married couple and they were both getting Canada Pension Plan, you could have almost 100000 by age 65 that they wouldn't have otherwise. Um, and they ha they get it sort of in that prime period of age 60 to 70 when they're they're doing the things they want to do and they've got hopefully the health and, and flexibility to do that. What, what other things should we take into account when we consider something like should we take Canada Pension Plan early? What else plays a role in it? Pension plans, 
I mean, you have to look at that. You got to see what uh, tax bracket they're going to put you into. Uh, you got to watch out for everyone has different uh, incomes and old age security clawback situations that are going to come in. So that's why it's really important. It's not a simple decision. I think that's what really confuses people. Th people think it's a simple decision. You need to sit down with your financial planner and work it out and see what it looks like in your situation. I, I do think that's important. I think the, the interesting thing is that there was a quote by Garth Turner, and he said, everybody should just lay down their calculators and just sign up for CPP the instant they turn 60. I think for most of the clients that I meet with, that's the case. Yeah, I find that's the situation too. Uh, once you've stopped working, your income's lower. And uh, I, I'm not, uh, sometimes I find uh, if people work and they want to take it on top, it may not be a good time because of taxes. But once you've retired, your income's down, it's probably going to remain in a pretty low tax bracket throughout your retirement. It's hard to find a good rationale for not taking it early uh, once you are retired. What about the whole splitting aspect of it? What do you think of that? Do you think it's worthwhile to, you know, uh, splitting the pension you can take yourself and, and if you, you're, you're married, you've got a spouse, um, you can each take 50% of the combined pensions. Do you think that's a good strategy? I rarely ever see it not be beneficial. I'll put it that way. Uh, it's one of those things people don't realize because we have income split. Income can be split on tax returns, pension income and RIF income, but uh, CPP income cannot be split on the tax returns. It has to be done at source. Something people don't realize. So it's one of those things you're probably better to, to go and get it done. And then if the government changes the rules, you're probably going to be grandfathered because you had the thing split in the first place. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I think the other thing to think of is you've been paying into this plan for, in, in some cases, 40 plus years. At some point, you want to start to get a benefit from it, and you don't probably want to wait till you're 70 years of age. Yeah. And, and so sometimes the numbers say, well, you might be financially better off to wait till 70, assuming you make it all the way to 90 or, or older. But as we know, not everyone makes it there, right? We have, you know, we see the full gamut. People pass at age 68 or age 75 all the time. And if you do make it, you're not spending that much money at that stage either. So then the, the other question I, I get asked, and sometimes I have debates with clients is, you know, should we ta uh, get into the RSP money before age 71? Does it make any financial sense to touch the RSP money at say age 63? If the clients stop working or should they wait till 71? What's, what's your thought on that? Again, everyone's situation is different. It needs a in-depth look at everyone's personal situation. But there are a lot of cases where you can really optimize people's tax brackets. We pay very high taxes in Canada, but on income under 42,000, we have a very low tax rate. We're taxed at 20%. Now, there, there's two pieces to remember in here. The one thing is later on when you're forced to take income at 71, if you have a big RIF account at that point, you're gonna be required to take minimum payments. In some cases, that puts people into an OAS clawback situation. So if we can take money earlier out of the RIF to avoid a later old age security clawback, that's very beneficial for the client. So that's a, a big piece. A second piece in it is uh, estate planning from an estate planning purpose. Uh, generally, the, the way we like to describe is when someone dies, your last words out of everyone's mouth is sell everything. And that means you sell your investments, you sell your RIF, you sell your vacation property. Everything gets sold on the day you pass away, which generally means most of the stuff is gonna be in the top marginal tax bracket. In many cases, 53% in Ontario. So if you can get money out of your RIF earlier in lower tax brackets, 20 or 30%, rather than it be an estate to your kids tax at 53%, very beneficial move. I especially notice it's sort of in that, you know, uh, from 60 to 71, there's a window. And sometimes if people don't retire till 65, their window's smaller. But if you can take some money out of the registered plans and you, you do the calculation, how much to take out? Is it 20,000, 30,000 or, or, or the full minimum? You should do it. And I think the big thing is we always talk about the top marginal rate at, you know, 53% in Canada. If you also get old age clawback on top of that, 
your top tax rate goes up into the 60s or, or almost 70s. It's crazy. So you're better to take that money earlier. Even if you take that money and just put it into your open account, you've reduced your tax bill later on. And, and that's the advantage to it. Even if you take that money and put it into your tax-free savings account, at least it's been growing tax-free. So lots of strategies there. What's the lesson in it all? The big lesson is none of these decisions are simple or easy. Yeah, this is why we do financial planning. We always talk about how important financial planning is. It's because you need to look at everyone's own individual situation and see what makes sense. There's an opto time to take out your Canada pension plan. There's an optimal time, uh, optimal amount to take out of your RIF accounts and an optimal time to start taking them. And without having a financial plan, it's really a guessing game. Do you think this is something people can figure out on their own or is it is it more difficult than that? It's gotten too difficult now. I, I would agree. I, I still, the odd time will have a client come in and I'll run the numbers and I go, wow, I wasn't expecting that. There's there's different things you see based on the the, the makeup of, of a client's retirement plan, let's call it. Absolutely. Well, this is Rob and Mike. Uh, thanks for listening and we'll talk to you next week. You have been listening to the McClellan Financial Group of Asante Capital Management Limited. Asante Capital Management Limited is a member of the Canadian Investor Protection Fund and Investment Industry Regulatory Organization of Canada. Insurance products and services are provided through Asante Estate and Insurance Services Incorporated. This material is provided for general information and is subject to change without notice. Every effort has been made to compile this material from reliable sources, however no warranty can be made as to its accuracy or completeness. Before acting on any of the above, please make sure to see a professional advisor for individual financial advice based on your personal circumstances.